Hi, and welcome to my playhouse. And today I've been out on my data center and found one of the first servers that I ever got. I actually got a lot of these, I've only kept one. It's not very long ago that I actually threw out the other ones. I took all the good pieces and I threw them out. Because this is an HP server, but it's actually a compact Proliant server. After this server was produced, HP and Compact like merged the two companies. They merged and became one company and HP continued this line of servers. But this is actually the Compact DL380R01. I think this is first generation of the DL380, which is a really recognized server these days. Very popular. But right now we are at generation 9 of that server and this might just be generation 1. And it's packed with good stuff. So uh, I thought we should just have a look at it and see what's inside and on the back. And go around it as if this was uh, something special. It actually is something special. <laughs> they're getting kind of pricey on eBay because they're so rare. I don't know who would buy a server like this today, but probably if you have a server and you are running something that you cannot run on something, I have no idea what that could be. Let's, let's have a look at the server. Here is the front and the first thing we see is the hard drive. Oh, the first thing we see is that this is the Pentium 3 processor. Very cool stuff inside. So, uh, but we have hard drives. These are nothing less of 18.2 gigabytes, 15,000 RPMs, wide ultra 3 SCSI drives, and there is room for four of those. You can actually get a thing so that you can put them in here as well. So you can put hard drives in here. But right now there is the CD-ROM drive, and I actually think this is a CD-ROM drive and not a DVD drive. They did not come with DVD drive. And I have a tape backup station in this one. And that's actually the reason why this server is still alive. And I actually also think that it works and has Windows Server 2003 installed. But I haven't had this one powered up for at least 6-8 years or something like that. And it has a floppy drive. Good old compact floppy drive over here, on off button and power LED, hard drive link activity I think this is. And down here it says DL380R01 P1256 Euro. I think this is the P1000 is the Pentium 3 processor that is a thousand megahertz and uh, the 256 is probably the amount of RAM that this server was always the cache, the amount of kilobytes cache in the processor. But we'll see when we check out the RAM if there is more than 256 kilo uh, megabytes in it. That's probably that number. If it's considerably less, that's probably the amount of cache on the P3 processors. Let's go around to the back. Here is the back of the server and we can immediately see that there is four slots for PCI ports. Down here there is a, I think it's a SCSI, SCSI connection right there. We have the VGA connection for the monitor. Nothing has changed there except um, now the connection is blue, here the drawing is blue. There is the network connection and I think this is 100 megabit ethernet connection. There is a printer port and there is actually two serial ports and there is PS2 for mouse and keyboard. And there is room for hot pluggable power supplies. There is only one in this one. It's, this is just a filler but it's possible to put in a hot plug power supply in that one too. And here there is room for additional SCSI connections to come out the back of the server. These servers were pretty normally used together with a DAS direct attached storage device which was a, a unit just full of hard drives. I got a couple of those. 
sitting around too. Let's turn it around again and go inside. To get into the server there is these finger screws and they very easily get too tight to use the fingers so there is both Torx and a flathead screwdriver can go in and solve that problem. There's two of them and there's one down here and that's the one that I always forget. I was actually, I was gonna do this video and I just couldn't get the bloody server up and I have forgotten to loosen this one. And when that's loose, the cover gets, is ready to be taken off. So let's take the cover off. And even the first model of this server has instructions inside the server here. And we can see that, oh, there's actually memory modules. 64 megabytes, 128 megabytes, 230 megabytes, and 512 megabytes, and one gigabyte blocks. So they were probably very expensive, but there is a lot of stuff here. But let's put that aside and look into the server. There is a couple of PCI slots in this server. That's quite interesting, and it comes with a really weird airflow management device. This is like foam. I think they stopped doing that. It was kind of weird. There's only room for four blocks of RAM in this server. Here is the hard drive base, here's the power supplies, the CD-ROM drive and in this case the tape backup station, LTO1 this one is. And over here there is room for some power stuff. There's the on off switch. Let's turn it a bit around. Down here are the two CPUs and they're, they're 1 gigahertz processors and they're 256 kilobytes internal cache. Can you take the one of those up? The old Pentium 3 processor. I don't really miss this one. It was easier though with the built-in heatsink. But, but that's it. They were slow. Let's take this as a network card. I think this is a gigabit ethernet connection. Now that the server only came with 100 megabit. And down here is, this is an, the first generation ILO adapter. And this was how big it was back in those days. And it has cable connections that goes down to the motherboard. Oh, this is not it. It's this one. So you plug in this card and you have to plug in a cable to the system board as well. Let's just try and take this out. It has a really funny locking mechanism here for the, the PCI slots. You press this thing and it rolls back like that. I don't know why they stopped that. That's actually a pretty good idea. There it is, that wasn't that wasn't too easy. It's a big card, it's full size PCI and it has it has a ATI graphics card, RAID 2C, it has a big Intel process or something, and memory and monitor connection, power connection. This back in these days you had to power these externally. You have keyboard and mouse and you have a LAN connection for the management adapter is the ILO adapter. And down on the system board, here we have connection for the, what is this? It's the tape connection that is plugged into this one. This one is probably to the, to the hard drives. Yes, that one goes over to the, to the hard disk base over here. This is cache memory for the RAID controller really high-end this stuff, there's a little cache there, so with, with this little thing 
the server has some cache on its RAID controller. The built-in RAID controller is being used in this server. Like that. And it has a very big battery for keeping the BIOS. So let's put this back over there and look into some of the other stuff. Let's have a memory block up, see what that is. They look alike, all these memory blocks. Let's see if we have any numbers. Oh boy, this is a 512 megabytes memory block. That must have been expensive back in the days. And I think there is there is four of those. So this server has two gigabytes of RAM. It's actually not that bad. Let's put that back down. According to the lab, this server was able to take one gigabyte blocks, so maybe you can put in four gigabytes of memory in this server. That's uh, quite a lot for an old server like this. Each of the processors have a power module, a power regulator that is put in the server. Uh, it comes with one. You can't run a server without at least one processor. So, but when you get the next processor, you have to remember to get a power regulator as well. They normally come with the processor kit if you buy it on an original processor for the server. But this is old vintage hardware. This card is dated 1999 to 2000. So, probably this server is from about from around the year 2000. So it's about 15 years old. Let's put the cards back. Oh, and this thing. This was one of the first servers that I really got for myself that I take home and play with. I got, I think I got five or six of these servers and I just took out all the good parts and put it over in one server. And apparently this one became the best server because I've kept this one. I remember that there was, some of them had only 533 megahertz processors I think. Some of them had 700 megahertz and this one had 1000 megahertz or 1 gigahertz and that was the biggest and I actually got two of those. I think there were only one processor in each of them and I took those the one processor from one of them and put it over in this one together with all the best RAM power regulator thing and the good the ILO adapter back there. I don't think I ever used this ILO adapter for anything. I just took it over so that it was there. Well, this was how I got into servers and it's getting to be a lot of years. I think I've had this server for about nine years now. So I have been playing around with this for a long time. And I, I'm gonna keep this just to remind me of when I started. So I hope you have enjoyed this a little trip back memory lane for the first generation of the HP DL380 Generation 1 or R01. Thank you for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and hopefully with some newer stuff. Have a nice day. Bye bye.